Good morning, everyone. Welcome to IAC Press book release event. The book today that is going to be released is Ramachandran, a biography of Gopala Samundram Narayan Ramachandran, the bi uh, in famous Indian biophysicist by Raghupati Sharma. To start the event, may I request Professor Amrish Chakravarti, Chair, IAC Press, to give the welcome address. Okay, so good morning and welcome to. Uh, I, I think probably the most important event, uh, well, one of the most important events of book release by IIC Press. Uh, so my name is Amaresh. I currently chair IIC Press Committee. Uh, uh, welcome to all of you. And it's a great occasion to have one of the most celebrated of Indian uh, scientists autobiography or biography in this case to be released. Uh, I will just very briefly speak about IIC Press. IIC Press was started in 2008 uh, to commemorate the, you know, the celebratory, uh, the centenary year of IIC, and also to initiate uh, a press that will uh, publish books of quality in science engineering uh, at affordable price. So I think those are the two keywords. One is affordable, and the other is quality. And I think it has stayed to, uh, honest to its uh, promises and published a large number of books with, with that. Um, the, we have a number of committees uh, and we also work with a number of other presses, uh, Cambridge University Press being the largest, as well as uh, WSPC. And uh, we um, work with them in order to extend our reach to especially international audience. And we still hold true to this uh, uh, tenet that we would like to have affordable uh, books. So even the international books uh, are made available to Indian authors at an affordable price. And uh, uh, we have uh, the press committee has uh, Professor Diptiman Sen, uh, Professor S.P. Arun, Professor Praval Maiti, and myself, and of course, Professor Koshal Varma as ex officio. So my uh, submission to all of you that please publish books with us. And we'd love to uh, have that. IIC Press is not just for IIC. It's for the entire world, and we have books actually from various parts of the world, including other parts of the country that have been published before. So with that, I will stop and I'll uh, let the proceeds go. And it's a very warm occasion, and I look forward to listening more to other speakers. Thank you. Oh, we are delighted to have a video message from Professor Ramesh Narayanan, Professor of Astronomy, Harvard University, and son of the illustrious father, G. N. Ramachandran. It is a pleasure to know about the personal side of the luminary from his son himself. I will play the video. Dear friends, my name is Ramesh Narayan, and I am the son of the late Professor G. N. Ramachandran, known as G. N. R. to many of his colleagues and students and friends. I'm delighted to be part of this centenary celebration of G. N. R. And I'm particularly delighted that the Indian Institute of Science is reissuing Professor Raghupati Sharma's biography of my father. So the organizers have asked me to say a few words on this occasion, mainly reminiscences. There's not much I can add to what many of you know, namely the amount of extraordinary science that GNR did during his career you know, complete new fields that he opened up and he's famous for so many discoveries. You already know this, there's not much I can add to that. There are also many students of his who have, of course, gone through years of training from GNR, mentorship, etc. I didn't have any of those, but of course, as his son, I saw a different part of GNR. And maybe I'll tell you a few things about him that might be of interest. Basically, what I recall is that, you know, I think he was a gifted teacher and a mentor. Quite apart from his research, which is extraordinary, I think he had the ability to really bring the best out of people. So, you know, in my own case, in terms of mentorship, a couple of things that I can think of when I had finished high school and I was kind of moving on to college, all my friends were going to engineering uh, colleges, medical school, etc. And he told me, you know, I think you should be a scientist. 
and not any scientist study physics. So his theory was, once you study the fundamentals of physics, you can then do pretty much anything. And he himself was an example, you know, he studied physics and mathematics, and he ended up doing molecular biology, which he called biophysics. But you know, I think it's all the physics background that helped him so much, gave him new ways of looking at problems that others in the field might not have thought of. And I think that was great advice. I did take his advice. I went into physics, dabbled for a bit with soft condensed matter physics or even condensed matter chemistry, you might call it. But then, you know, I migrated to astronomy, astrophysics, same old physics. And, you know, I was completely prepared for this totally new field, which I was entering after my PhD. I think that was a really good piece of advice he gave. Another piece of advice, and you know, this is even later, this is after my PhD and after a few years after that, I had the opportunity of going to Caltech as a postdoctoral fellow. And you know, I was already comfortably employed in uh, India, in Bangalore. And I was kind of thinking, should I or should I not go? And I just talked to GNR. It was just a three minute conversation, I think. He just looked at me and said, you should go. And I don't think he was thinking about the prestige of Caltech. His thinking always was that every scientist has to keep on growing. Just because in your, your, in your 30s, which I was at that time, doesn't mean that you have learned everything. You have to keep learning new stuff. And he said the best way to do that is to work with new people, especially intelligent, smart, successful scientists. He said, you know, that's the way you learn how to do better science. Just go. If you don't like, you can always come back. So I went and I think it really made a difference. I completely changed the style of science that I was doing. Another piece of mentorship or advice he gave me, which I never took, unfortunately, was he said, you know, it's all very good to do research, publishing original research, papers, etc. You should also write books. That was his advice. And, you know, he did write books. And thinking back, I know, I mean, all of, pretty much all of the Fourier transforms that I know, I learned by reading his book. This is Ramachandran and Srinivasan, Fourier Methods in Crystallography. I read the book from cover to cover. And I think it's pretty much the basis of everything I now understand of how Fourier transforms and Fourier series work. That was good advice, I think he gave me. I did not take it, I'm sorry to say. Um, but you know, that book is so lucid, so clear. And that kind of brings to mind the other aspect of GNR. I think he was a great teacher. I mean, he's a great speaker. Anybody who's heard him give talks knows that. But I also saw him as a teacher. Occasionally I have attended lectures by him. But I think the main teaching he did at least in my case, was when I was very young. Every day in the evening, we would go sit in the terrace and he would ask me, give me problems. You know, simple problems. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm less than 10 years old at that time, probably seven or eight. So there are problems at that level, but he instilled in me this kind of, you know, desire to solve problems to look at things where you don't know the answer and really, you know, use your brain. That came very early in my life and it's entirely to his credit. You know, he would ask me these interesting questions, logic problems, calculational problems, everything I had to do mentally, no writing, nothing, you know, on the spot. Come on, what's the answer? So I think that was something that I think has lived with me. Research is problem solving. We know that. And for me, it comes completely naturally. And it goes back, I think, to age seven or whenever it was that we were doing this. Every evening, in between problems, he would point out the stars. So I knew all the first magnitude stars. And this was in Madras, Chennai. And, you know, it's close enough to the equator that you can see all the bright stars in the sky. Many of the brightest stars are way down south in the sky, you know except for Sirius, which can be seen from many parts of the earth. Most of the, many of the others, bright ones are far south. Madras, you can see them. 
you still have to you know look at the proper time because of the trees and all that but anyway i could name them all forgot them all completely but then you know i wonder whether it's an accident or that's the reason why i made the switch to astrophysics no now i do astronomy not necessarily first magnitude stars but you know astronomy and it's astrophysics the physics training has come in so i can keep on talking but i have a feeling the organizers didn't want me even to speak this long they said 2 3 minutes i must have taken longer um but you know before i i stop i have to tell you one story this is something i think very few people probably even know you know gnr was a half decent cricketer he was a bowler i think he used to play cricket when he was in st joseph's college trichy that is for his bachelor's degree he has told me that he used to you know play bowl when he was a phd student in cambridge england but back in madras i never saw him play cricket and i don't think he ever did except on one occasion there was a friendly match between the ac college campus and the main university campus which was you know on the marina and you know he must have told somebody you know i can play cricket and so you know the young guys said okay said professor says he can play cricket let's make him the captain so he was the captain of the ac college team cricket team and there was of course the main campus which i think was the better team so anyway there was this match in the university grounds and he took me along and again i'm talking about you know i was very young then 8 years old maybe and so you know i was sitting in the pavilion and watching the match and uh, it's the only time i think i have sat in the pavilion of any grounds so he had told them his team that he can bowl and that he was a fast bowler so i guess the young guy said professor says he can bowl fast bowling let's give him give him a chance you know let him bowl one over opening bowler what's the big deal how bad can it be so he was the opening bowler on one side i think he only lasted three overs okay he was tired he was late 30s at this point but in those three <laughs> overs he wreaked havoc he got i think three wickets two of them were clean bowled i remember very distinctly i forget about the third one and you know this is the top of the order right the cream of the batting on the opposite team and i remember sitting you know i was this little boy nobody paid attention to me but these batsmen would come back you know with their wickets all gone and they were talking see i don't know what the professor is doing maybe it's in swingers you know and i believe it was in swingers because he, he was an in swing bowler and he had this funny action which really helped the ball to swerve in but it was quite amazing and he never played again only thing i remember is for days afterwards he was saying shoulders were aching and legs were aching etc etc okay i think i should stop at this point but let me reiterate i'm really happy that people still remember gnr now on the centenary of his birth and i'm i really love the idea that the biography is being re-released now through the indian institute of science and i would like to join all of you in celebrating the wonderful career life and career of professor g n ramachandra thank you it was indeed a pleasure listening to professor narayanan and to get a glimpse of the uh, personal side of uh, the luminary now we come to the most important part of the event uh, may i uh, request professor anand suresh and professor uh, usha vijayagavan to come to the dais and release the book may i also request professor amrit chakravarty and professor kaushal verma to come to the dais thank you uh, can i request professor usha vijay agarwal to say a few words followed by professor anand suresh well it's a, it's a wonderful uh, pleasure to participate in this uh, event of this book release reprinting of uh, 
Raghupati Sharma's book, a biography on uh, Ramachandra. And this is actually the second of the events uh, celebrating the centenary yeah, birth year for uh, Professor GNR. Uh, on October 8th, we had a lecture which was delivered by uh, Professor Kira Ramakrishnan. And that was an online event and it was, uh, you know, attended uh, very widely and very much anticipated. Now about uh, what can I say about Professor GNR, which, uh, you know, which you probably do not know about. Brilliant might, uh, mentored by yet another brilliant mentor, uh, C.V. Raman, went from, uh, followed his passion, moved from uh, electrical engineering to physics and uh, followed his passion on not only, uh, you know, developing tools, he developed many methodologies and instruments for crystal structure, uh, put India on the map, the Madras group, as it was called, with uh, Karta, um, you know, made India on the map for their first solution, for the structure of uh, the triple helical structure of collagen, um, became a global, globally recognized person for uh, understanding the structure of the chemical bond and uh, put textbook material in the hands of the next generation of scientists then. You know, the Ramachandran plot is now in every biochemistry textbook. So he is an iconic figure and IISC is very proud of the association that uh, we've had with him when he was a professor here, returned after his PhD from Cambridge and joined here, um, then went on to move to uh, Madras. We've of course heard uh, glimpses on his, uh, on the personality, the person behind the uh, iconic scientist, from his uh, illustrious son, uh, Professor Ramesh Narayanan. Um, do I have any connections to this? Well, I can only say that I, uh, one of uh, GNR's nieces is uh, Professor Jaya Thiagi, who is a professor um, retired just recently from the All India Medical Institute, Professor of Biochemistry. She happens to be his niece and Jaya is a good friend of mine. Um, so, we didn't actually chat about uh, Professor GNR, but that's a connection that I find. And I discovered another connection, very remote again. Uh, St. Joseph's College, Twitchy, is where my grandfather studied. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, if you go and study in uh, the places which were like St. Joseph's College and University of Madras and University of Calcutta and so on, you were taught by really dedicated teachers. And that must have stayed with him. And that's why GNR not only was a brilliant scientist himself, he cared deeply about training and education and taught the best people. My last connection to GNR is his last PhD student, Professor Manju Bansal, is my collaborator and we have worked together and published a couple of papers. So I didn't have the pleasure of meeting Professor GNR or uh, you know, scientifically interacting with him, but through these various threads, I feel connected to this iconic person who's made India proud in the past and through the training that he has put in place will continue to make Indian science grow. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this event. May I now request Professor Anand Suresh to say a few words? Uh, thank you and it's great to be in this event. I think this is really remarkable that uh, we are releasing this book in uh, JNR centenary year and uh, I will also recall my uh, Kind of indirect connection to Ramachandran. In 2002, being a mechanical engineer, somehow I looked at a protein as a nanoscale compliant mechanism, but then it's deformation and so forth. I was uh, with my students started to read about proteins. The first book that I took, as Professor Shavijadagavad said, the first chapter had Ramachandran map and there was IAAC there. And that's how I set my eyes on IAAC. <laughs> I knew about IAC before 2002, I was University of Pennsylvania with my students started reading about protein structures and started doing something. And I came here uh, for my sabbatical in 2003. Uh, that was when I think there was a book released by editor Professor Vijayan uh, about uh, Jay Ramachandran's work. There was a, I guess, a symposium conduct around that time. And it was 2004 or, or 50 years before that is when he had discovered the triple helix collagen structure. So I learned about all that, went back, bought that book, read more about protein structure. When I came back in 2004, there I 
started to know more about uh, MBU and GN Ramachandran and the other things. Then actually came across this book in 2007. I don't know who gave it to me. I read it at that time. I was really touched by the content of this book that uh, we didn't, I didn't know. I, I guess there was a movie made by one of the academies about uh, GNR at that time. I happened to watch that much later, but I read this book, the wonderful book. I'm glad it is now reprinted and reissued. Uh, there are lots of things we learned. We learned about uh, JNR being a cricketer, but also he was a good, uh, I guess, a writer of poems that are there in this book. But I was so touched by this poem. These poems are all about science. When he wrote letters to his friends who were doing Cambridge, you know, PhD in Cambridge, those letters also should have science. So whatever he did was about science. There was uh, one poem that is there, how to be a good scientist here. And uh, I was so touched by this poem and I had to translate it to Telugu. I did. At that time, last night I was reading about uh, that. I'll just read the first four lines of this poem. He says, how to be a good scientist dedicated to, uh, he says, his friend, V. Jagannathan. I don't know who he is. The first four lines, it says, art or science, it's all the same. Heart sincere is its real seat. Bubbling thoughts made calm and tame from sculptured shapes to fill its need. And then there are four more stanzas. Now, every one of them, it's like, as a poetry, if you look at it, it's actually good. At least I like it. And the content, of course, is there. He has written about Lena Spalling and others. And there was another thing that I uh, learned from this book, which I'm sure people will read and learn now, is that towards the end of his life, he was actually moved to our library by, at that time, director for Sena Rao, uh, where there was a mathematical engineering section was created where he was there. And by the time I think his mental illness had, you know, was showing up and he was there. Even at that time, he did marvelous work. Uh, I learned from this book again that he tried to develop mathematical representation for uh, Jain philosophy uh, called Shayat uh, Nyaya. And he used this binary vector logic representation for those uh, shlokas and the logic there. Uh, and he wrote over a dozen papers and some journal, which I didn't recognize, but I got information all here. And uh, it's amazing. His mind was amazing. You know, he did many things and probably people don't know that he had done fundamental work in uh, reconstruction of uh, tomography images that he was there. So it's not just about uh, triple helix uh, structure or uh, um, DN Ramachandran map of ISI map. And uh, he had done many other things that probably if we read between the lines, we'll some, uh, learn something more. And I'm also happy to say that we have a uh, you know, foliage pattern of GN Ramachandran Mab on campus. So for, unfortunately, we are not maintaining it. Maybe now uh, we should do it in the centenary year. It is there, it is growing, but some things are gone. Some grass has grown. We will uh, have our uh, nursery people do it. At some point, actually, I was using my own gardener to maintain it <laughs> because it was not possible to do that with the nursery. But, uh, you no, know, we want to do that. You know, that's there in the between biology and physics. That's what he did, biophysics. I think we will remember him forever. I think his son said, he was pleased that we remember. I'm sure no effort needs to be made to remember GNR. He will be remembered forever. Thank you uh, for giving the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Usha Vijay Raghavan and Professor Anand Suresh. Uh, may I now request uh, Professor Kaushal Verma, uh, Chair, Office of Communication, to give the formal vote of thanks. Okay. Um, thank you, Professor Verma. You know, uh, publishing a book is a very long and arduous task. Starting from the conception of the idea, <clears throat> making sure that the idea is sustained and nurtured, right to the nitty gritties of the production, editing, and so on and so forth. That's it's a very long journey. And um, this happens with every book, not only at IAC Press, but across the world, this is the process that is followed. And particularly in this case, I would like to begin by thanking uh, Professor Balram first gave us this idea that, look, here is a wonderful book. It is out of print for many years now. Can IAC Press take it up? So, uh, you know, many thanks to him for suggesting this in the first place. Of course, when this first came to IAC Press, uh, we were all very excited. Uh, I remember Amresh saying that, yes, we must do it. And I said, uh, yes, of course, we must do it. You know, and uh, this is how the whole project sort of uh, came about. And the, the, the nurturing, of course, it you know, it is a long process also, you know, uh, the committee has to be engaged at, uh, at various points. And I think I'm very fortunate to have the support uh, <clears throat> of the entire IAC press committee here. Amarish, Prabal, Tiptiman, Arun, 
and uh, it's been such a wonderful uh, you know thing to have worked with with all of you for all these years coming to the most uh, back breaking part of the job um, you know this is handled by the office of communications uh, you have a wonderful team of people uh, with us they included <clears throat> dilakshi and uh, deepak sandeep so many other people who contribute uh, their bit in in uh, ways that i cannot even begin to list you know uh, editing to me is is a job that tends to be overlooked till somebody finds a blunder but without that you know people sort of tend to overlook that so i would like to take this opportunity to to thank everybody at the office of communications not only that uh, we work with uh, a team of seven designers who have been with us for the last 6 uh, 7 years now and it's it's been wonderful uh, working with all of them including the print tips you know this is the final product this comes straight from the printing press and everybody has to sort of contribute their bit i'm very happy that you know we have uh, the support of all these people here so <clears throat> um let me end by uh, you know uh, thanking pitasta for taking care of today's program uh, and of course uh, professor uh, ramesh narayanan and everybody else who has contributed to this thank you very much with this we come to the end of today's event thank you very much for joining and we'll hope to see you next time thank you